Hey there, it is Tomster on the behalf of Indie Structural Productions once again, and now we're here with the longer format video of Neela's guitar build. So this is the seven string custom Daedalus made for Cyan Kicks, more specifically for their show at the UMK Finals. So doing things a little bit out of turn there. First you saw me make the neck blank. Now I already had some pieces left over from other builds that worked perfectly to make that maple and walnut neck. Plus the fretboard that needed some fret slots cut into it. So I got that out of the way quick. Then it's onto the ash body and joining it up. And onto the bandsaw where it's time to cut out the rough shape of this guitar. This is just to make my life a little bit easier before routing on the router table. Same applies to the headstock shape. Now I finally got a dedicated truss rod router bit and got to use it on this build and boy howdy did it make a difference. Now due to this being a 7 string build, the body had to be just a little bit bigger than usual, about 1% which meant that I had to add a little collar onto the router just to get a little bit more clearance between the bearing and the actual side of the body. Now, I didn't manage to get the full thickness done, so I had to use the bobbin sander to sand down the rest of the guitar body's shape. Then, lots and lots of clamps as I glue on the veneer top for this guitar. Now, to match the veneer top, I had some Karelian birch that I had found from my grandfather's workshop that I decided to turn into back plates. Now, while I'm at it, I might as make a few just for future cases and use the best looking one of these for this build. Binding, once again, a very simple solution this time, just using black plastic, which I usually don't like to use, but works very well for what we had in mind for this guitar. So, super glue, masking tape, and then paring away all the excess with a sharp chisel. Now I wanted to do something very special for the 12th fret inlay, and the band was already seen in promo shots with this fox mask that they had specifically made for the UMK. So I decided to mimic that with the 12th fret inlay and make this fox mask out of mother of pearl. A few different pieces just to get some nice little contrasts in there. In order to get a nice snug fit, I'm basically just scoring the outline of the inlay and then excavating all the excess material with this little multi-tool with a router base. It worked very well and got the job done pretty quick, making for a nice clean cavity for me to inlay into. Then it's just a matter of gluing everything down with some super glue. Now for a little added detail, I'm also going to be engraving the mask, but also the eyes need a little bit of color. So to make those pop, we're just going to use some red resin. Now with all that said and done, it's time to bind the fretboard. And I'm just going to use the same ebony that I made the fretboard out of. So that's going to make for a very nice classy look in the end. And to glue the fretboard on, it's just a matter of applying the correct amount of pressure. Not too much and not too little. Just enough to get everything nicely fitted. And then, as the fretboard already has the taper on there, we're just going to use that as the guide to route the actual taper of the neck. Now usually it's actually pretty good practice to kind of drill halfway through on the headstock from one side and then halfway through on the other side. However, I had a new plan that I want to try out with this. Now first I'm going to do the scoop on the front as I would normally do on a headstock like this. But the thing that I wanted to try out this time around was having a scoop on the back of the headstock as well, which would then clean up if there was any tear out on the back of the headstock. Drilling out and excavating all the excess material to make routing easier for the neck pocket. And this is where the Evertune fun begins. So there's going to be a bunch of different templates. I think it was about seven templates in total just to get the Evertune routed. I didn't film all the processes here, but they have very good instructions on how to do this properly on their website. For more information, check out Evertune and their website. This was the first time that I did an Evertune route, and I must say, I was terrified. But it went swimmingly. It went really well. 
pick up cavities as per usual, pretty much the same process as with the neck pocket. Then drilling all the access for all the wiring to go through. And we wanted to have a little bit of an extra detail on the headstock. As the headstock was going to be red, it didn't really match the front of the guitar that was going to be transparent white. So adding this little bit of Carillion birch veneer kind of helps with that contrast. Radius in the fretboard to 16 inches, which is, as frequent viewers might know, one of my favorite radiuses to use. As previously mentioned, the engraving on the inlay. And finally, one of my favorite parts that I always talk about, neck carving. Shinto saw rasps, spoke shaves, lots of different rasps, and some sandpaper. But this time, I also had a new tool at my disposal, an Iwasaki file. I have been waiting to get one of these for ages, and I finally got to use it on this guitar, just to make the volume all that much better, and I feel very happy with the results. Just making sure that I get that perfect, perfect fit for what we've discussed with Neela. Doing a little bit of a billy carve. And then the terrifying part of routing a backplate on a router table. This is nerve wracking, but you know, it gets the job done. Roundovers on the back of the guitar. Can't do it on the front because we got binding, but the back will be nicely rounded. Lumen lace side dots as per the first Scion Kicks guitar. Fretting. So first I'm going to radius all my fret wire a little bit over 16 inches just so it fits a little bit better. Remove some of the tang to fit for the binding. Tap in one end, tap in the other end, and then smooth out from the middle outwards. Just to get those tangs to sit in and then to the side so that they won't poke out at any point. Crowning all the frets. What was missed was the leveling. I already did that, but I didn't have it on video. Gluing on the neck, I already did a dry run of this. Very important to do that. And then gluing it in here. Once again, very scary always doing that part, but it worked out for the best. Now, to access those higher frets, I decided to do a little cutaway on the back just to make things a little bit easier. And then it's just sanding sanding, 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 in preparation for this, staining and finishing. So we're going to do two layers of red on the back and the sides and the neck, and then a bunch of layers of white on the front. And thanks to this project, this color that I did ended up being called Hurricane Red for Cyan Kicks' song, Hurricane. The IP logo getting acid etched into the aluminum here. I couldn't decide which sort I wanted, so this was one option. But considering that it was going on a white background, I asked my significant other which one would be better, and it was decided to go with the black background inlay instead. So I'll just cut that out right now. Clear coats. So the first essential clear coats to go on just to lock everything up before taking it to Neela for a signature and his first look at his new guitar. Just making sure to get nice, even coats. Three coats per session and at minimum three sessions. Hey, that we not. Signature in the back of the headstock, and then some more clear coats. 
With all the finishing done, it's time to make the nut. Once again, I'm using Corian, just like I did with the first Cyan Kicks guitar, as a substitute, substitute for bone. Putting in the headstock inlay, and it's all starting to pull together. Polishing up all the frets, just to make them as shiny as possible. Buffing them up with some chrome polish, and oiling the fretboard. Then it's just a matter of pushing in all of the electronics. Now these are the Fishman Fluence Moderns, seven string versions. There was a little bit of an issue with trying to fit everything in because of the huge Evertune route, but got everything done. Plus there's a little bit of LED wiring in there, just for a little added effect. Once again, my favorite Schaller M6 locking tuners, cause they are awesome. Ever tune in place, pickups looking shiny, not getting the nut slots cut, according to the headstock angle, and the strings getting pulled through. Now the strings are pretty high still, so we are going to add a bar retainer just to make things work a little bit better. And then it's just a matter of intonating and playing around with the first ever tune I've ever made, which um, was odd. And Neela's reactions to the final guitar. Enjoy some sounds and some riffs. One bucket one. That guy is buying them. To be honest, not bad for a little fender amp. And this guitar headed on to the big stage for the UMK finals and national television, which is absolutely crazy. I cannot believe that it's happened. And thank you so much for the band for letting me make these two unique instruments. And thank you for joining in and watching these videos. Be sure to like, comment down below and subscribe to see more. I will see you guys later. Be sure to catch Cyan Kicks on tour this year. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.